Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today we're going to do a tutorial on understanding the wave cube. Okay, so if you grab with two fingers, you can swing around in this three-dimensional space here. And if we tap top here, we'll get back to our top view. Okay, so at the moment there is nothing in here, um, just this sound, but no orbs or orbiting or anything like that going on so i'm going to explain exactly how this works so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to hit hold and i'm going to press this c2 i'm going to turn the volume down so you'll see this little dot has appeared in the center of the screen uh, it's centered because everything here has been double double tapped and returned to zero okay so first of all x amount if we hit the rate here what's happening although you can't well yeah you can see it this has started to modulate okay so that's your rate this is your x amount here you see that the uh, orb is moving and then going in the opposite direction is the other part of your x amount if we set that back to zero and we move the y amount now you'll see that we can move up and down as well and what's cool now is if we set our, say, X amount, say, maybe the, and our Y amount, maybe the, and we start to introduce the rate. You will see that we'll start to have our orbit as well. And then we can decrease, go the opposite direction. And this is orbiting around that sound. Now, <clears throat> this is very good. This is the X and the Y. So if I swing up now into a kind of a, well, we can go just front view. You'll see that it's just hovering around in the center there. And if I drag this point now, you, you, you see that the actual dot in the middle is getting bigger. And as I push back, it's getting further away. So the furthest back now, when I go back to my top view, it will just be all highlighted along this top line. So if I go back to top, there it is. It's it's kind of hovering around the, let's go back to our front view as well. And we can kind of drag this further forward. And this is moving in the X, Y position, but we're seeing it in a 3D view. Okay, so we're back there. And then we can kind of put it back wherever we wish. Okay, so <clears throat> the Z or the Z is the three-dimensional aspect, okay? So what we can do now is we go to Z now, and let's go to uh, a front view. Look at what happens when we start to add the Z amount. It starts to move in a multi-dimensional way with X, Y, and Z being affected, and we can multiply this as well but you know let's leave it as it is now and let's have a look at what it looks like on the top view still looks the same right because we need to go to a three-dimensional view to see what's happening so that's what our z is doing okay let's go back to top let's reset these And you're not hearing any variation in sound, but there's a good reason for that. I'm going to show you. So just remembering that that's your X amount. That's your X amount here. And this is your Y amount. And you can see as well, watch this. If if we're on X, right, and we move our X amount, you won't really see anything because you're seeing a two-dimensional view. But if we go to front now, you'll see that we can... We, if we increase the rate as well, we can move it in our X, it's inside the box, up and down sort of thing. Now, let's just reset all that and go back to our top view. Let's unhold this. If we go to timbres now, you'll see that all the sound, if I just play a note, I'm going to just increase the volume a bit. Whenever I move this, let me get off, uh, go to orbit, get off edit, sorry. It's all the same sound. 
This is because if we look at our timbres here, we've just got static saw, static fat saw one on all of the slots. So if we look here on the grid, if we're on top, we have these going this way and then these going this way. These going this way correspond to what timbres you have placed in here or what wavetables you've placed in here. So for instance, to change a wavetable, all we need to do is click on it. We can play it. But that's the, the, the dry sound sort of thing. Click it and then click this. And now we've got another sound. So let's choose this one. Choose this. I mean, there's tons and tons of these. So let's just choose a few at random. So select, choose. You see they're changing here. Uh, just um, select, choose, and so on and so forth until we just uh, quickly fill up all our all our slots. God knows what this is going to sound like. Um, but now when we go back to our orbs and we play, we've got a completely different sound. And if we hit hold again and play this C and move around, you'll see it's scanning through all those different... It's flipping between the the timbers now the x amount scans through the particular timbre it's highlighted on so on this first one which is uh, acme whistle one i'm going to scan through that one that one wavetable and of course So now what we can do is start to scan around using the same technique we had earlier. So if we go to X and Y now, increase the X amount and the rate. It's just scanning that one wave, but if we increase the Y amount, Now, the thing to understand here is if we go to our front view now, you'll see that it's just scanning around the entire wavetable here, but nothing is happening in the three-dimensional Z space, okay? This, these waves, let me just uh, unhold that a sec. These waves here, right? are kind of replicated on this wall at the back, although you can't see them. So this is where you'll start to get subtle variations as you add more uh, of Z in. So let's do that. So hold, and let's press our C2 again. Let's go negative, so we're going down. Okay. Now, where it gets really interesting now is when we start to add points. So if we go to our top view again, I'm going to go into edit here and I'm going to put add. So I'm going to add a point here and a point here and that will join those two points together. Now, if I tap and if I clear this, if I have add point added and I just hold, it will draw shapes for us whatever you like but still only in the x and y space okay so if we if we looked at the um if we got out of edit now and looked at the front view you'll just see it all at the top there's no three-dimensional stuff going on at all so let's go back to our top view let's just go into edit and clear and we're going to stay with add so we're going to add a point there and we're going to add a point there and when we play now We've still got all our, all our orbits going on. So let's reset those and the rate. So what's going on now is we're just going to scan between the two points. And it, the path will be dependent upon the direction you have set here. So backwards and forwards. So it just will go forwards. Uh, 
and then it'll loop forwards. So when it gets to the end, it'll start again. Okay, or backwards and forwards, and the same for the other direction. But when we start to add amounts of uh, our modulation with our orb in now, it gets very cool. So, But first, before we do that, let's add something in a three-dimensional space. Okay, so let's go to our Z here and let's go to something we can actually see. So let's move it with our fingers. Um, don't forget we're in add. So let's add a point down here and a point here and a point here and a point here. And we can go, we can see now that we're starting to add points in our three-dimensional space, which is very, very, very handy and very, very, very cool. So now if we go back to our, we can leave it on this view if we like, and we can, we can kind of see what's going on. And we play now. And this is very basic stuff. So if we have our arpeggiator switched on and hold a note, and we have hold switched on and add some notes as we go, let's slow the rate down, shall we? We've added no modulation or anything, or filtering, or what have you. Let's turn it down a little bit. Now, it gets really cool. We can come out of edit. Now, what auto does, basically, is kind of adds it in all over the place, depending on your... So you don't need to... But it's, it's, you get a much more accurate idea if you use the X, Y, and the Z. All right, so let's look at the top. Okay, let's look at the front. On the left hand view and of course we can grab it with two fingers and move it in any direction we like let's hear what happens when we start to add in our orbits now so the rates for the start off nothing yet because there's nothing been applied but and let's add x amount minus Excuse me, at any time you want, you can just go in and start to kind of say, oh, well, I, what's 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 going on here? I could apply some extra, I mean, there's so many wavetables <laughs> in here now. Let's pick this one. Nice. This one, maybe. And whenever it passes these points, whatever dimension it's in, it's going to change the sound. go to our effects And that's uh, basically how you how you do it. Now, here's the thing to remember: when you go into edit, you can erase orbs, and it will join up the next available point. You can move by just. Grabbing an orb or two, and then you know that you can add as well, and it joins up to the next the, the next available orb.
and I've applied no modulation. In fact, I've switched off every single modulation slot. So there you go. And what's cool as well, if you want this to kind of be animated, if you go to settings and you switch on perpetual rotation and go back to your orbs and then just slightly touch it with two fingers and then kind of just drag it. You can have it go really fast if you want. But it, it's a very pleasant and very relaxing when it's slow. Now we've removed all the kind of orbiting. But it's still in edit, so we can go to arrays and play a game of catch the orb. go there is like i said you can grab this at any time and we go back to go move now and just plonk this back in the center if we wanted to guys i hope you find this uh useful uh, uh in understanding how you can actually get into programming uh animog um yeah top job cool beans if you like the video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel please consider becoming a patreon from a dollar a month and uh yeah i will see you guys later ta-ra animog and understanding the uh wave cube and how you can place your bits and pieces of orbs and do your modulations and what have you within that three-dimensional space to create some very unique sounding patches okie dokie see you later ta-ra